So I got an email from some folks asking if I could do a review on a product that they had coming out. And I said yes, because once I saw it, I was like, I need to check this thing out. And so this week we're gonna be checking out this robot arm, which is also a 3D printer, a laser cutter uh, arm thing that can pick stuff up like at the claw at a Toy Story, as well as a drawer just with a marker. All right, so let's see what this thing can do. So we're taking a look at something kind of new for this channel, and this is a robot from Rotrix. Uh, this is actually a Kickstarter project. You can see the full Kickstarter down below. And uh, this is pretty cool because normally when you get into like robot arms and stuff, they're super, super, super expensive. Now this is uh, definitely several hundred dollars. It gets pretty close to actually to about a thousand. So it also comes with this 3D printer module, but um, the normal kit comes in this nice case and we get into it. Now, overall, this thing is uh, pretty compact. And for a robot arm, this actually is pretty small. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the actual arm out, if I can get it out. This is what we are working with. There's a couple of different modules, kind of the slide right on here. And here it click, and then there's just a button to release it on the side. So they've got this uh, pretty small laser diode module right here. And then they also have, so you actually put a pencil inside and then you can draw it, which is gonna be one of the first tests that we do. It also comes with an air pump and this is for the pneumatic arm that actually opens and closes. And then just a bunch of power and cables. All right, so let's go ahead and power this guy up. So we've got this pretty much set up and it actually comes with this touch screen uh, that lets you control uh, a lot of the stuff and you can actually upload an SD card so you don't actually have to have it connected to a computer, um, but it works pretty well also just to be able to jog things around. And then I'm going to hit home and you're gonna see kind of the reach of this guy. And what we're gonna be doing is just drawing a smiley face that is actually loaded into the software that comes with it. Uh, this is the pin module and we're gonna take our pin that they provide, although I guess you could use pretty much anything. And uh, let's see, it goes in like this. So we will that. And what's nice about this is it's actually spring loaded. So when it goes and hits the paper, it's got some tension there. So it actually drags along. And so this is just going to attach right here into the front. And then we're gonna set up a sheet of paper real quick. And we'll just tape it down. But then the one thing I need to do is actually set the height. And so that's gonna be dependent on the type of material that you're using. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. And I'm gonna start the send. All right, now it was getting some jittery as it was going, so I don't know if that is due just to this mat not being smooth, uh, but it's pretty cool. You can just draw stuff uh, with this guy. So we did the pin test. Let's go ahead and check out the laser module. So I've done a ton of laser reviews in my shop. I've got big CO2 machines and I have smaller diode machines. And actually uh, this guy is on the smaller end of a diode laser. So this is a two and a half watt, 12 volt laser diode. So these go up to like four or five watt, but 2.5 is, is kind of on the lower end. But um, I'm imagining for something this size, you really can't get something much heavier to put on the end. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wear some safety goggles uh, that came with it uh, because this diode laser you don't wanna look at. We're gonna be just engraving into this piece of basswood and I'm interested to see kind of how you focus this guy. So there's actually really good documentation that it has for all of these modules. All right, so I've got the laser focused and basically you gotta spin this thing down here at the bottom um, and you can actually turn the laser on uh, and this is at a very, very low setting and actually, All right, that looks good. Now let's turn this guy off and start our send and let's see how well this goes. Now, one thing they do provide with this is a 
enclosure and so you're protected from the uv light as well as uh, you can help vent out the smoke in my case i'm in my garage and the smoke is just going to go outside i'm always wearing glasses when i am running any type of laser uh, but this is pretty cool so since this isn't actually connecting to um, the workpiece we're not getting any of that dragging um, that is kind of limiting this guy because it's not just the stiffest assembly just because of how big it is and what it's made out of but um, because this is just drawing basically in the air with a laser uh, it does a really really good job that we have a pretty nice engrave from this guy So we are going to set up this pneumatic air pump and then they have this little box that has a air pump kit in it and inside we've got some cables as well as a bunch of stuff. Okay, so uh, we've got this set up. It comes with this air pump, which we've got plugged in. Hose that runs out of the back of this that I imagine is going to be the suction and then it runs around and then this guy uh, it was fairly easy to set up but um, there's a couple different versions this is the first version of the suction and then there's also one that is driven by air that then clamps like the claw on toy story all right so we're gonna drop this in and then this guy just attaches to the top and we've got just the sheet of paper you can either do it through the software or you can do it with the controller and just like with the pin module this can slide up so i'm just going to push it to goes down just a little bit then you can turn the compressor on you can see it sucked in like that let me go down just a little bit more and then we should be able to bring it up all right and then we're going to move it out. and then get it where you want it and go back up all right, now let's also see if we can do something a little bit heavier. So this is just like a sheet of MDF that they supplied. And let's drop our guy get down. And let's turn it on. And it looks like we got a good seal. Now, once you get uh, like weight on it, it definitely, the speed, it's definitely not gonna move. You can see it's kind of struggling a little bit, but uh, it still works, which is uh, pretty cool. And then let's place it. All right, let's uh, try a couple other things. So it has another feature in the software called Teach and Play, where basically you define certain keyframes and certain movements, and then you can set it on a loop, or you can tell it to do different things automatically. So this is just a test that I put together where it's gonna pick up the sheet of paper, move over, and then drop it into the bucket thing. That's probably not gonna go in because this is too big of a sheet of paper. Um, so basically there are four different keyframes on this. So this is number one, pauses for two seconds, turns the pump on. This is number two, that just so it clears the height. That's three and that's four. Now, um, initially I didn't have the, here, we'll run it one more time. So initially I didn't do this keyframe. And so instead it came like straight over and then it ran to the side. So you gotta kind of play around with it. But if you're doing something over and over and over again, um, this could be a pretty just goofy way to accomplish it. Like, let's say you've got a ton of post-it notes and you want them all to go into a bucket. You can actually set this to repeat. So I'm gonna say this is gonna repeat three times, then hit play. And it's gonna do just that. Now, why pick up everything? Let's see. Yeah, it's too, <laughs> the suction was too much. So um, there we go. We dropped all that in there. But I can get something else in there. Nothing is gonna go inside of this box. Let's see how far this goes down. That's good. And you can definitely see with the heavier uh, materials, it uh, doesn't run as fast. So again, this arm isn't the strongest, but when you're kind of playing around and learning how these type of things can work, this is uh, a really fun just thing to play around with. All right, so we took the suction nozzle off and it actually comes with a few different sizes. So you can do something bigger if you want. But now we've got the soft gripper on. So this is an air pump that can both pump air as well as suck the air. So with that in the software, um, you can get something that will grip, just like that. And then also something that can release. 
So it even moves it past whatever the neutral point is, which is right there. So just like before, um, we're gonna do something pretty similar. All right, so all you have to do is just drop it down and then hit grip and hit release. And there we go. So pretty cool. Just a little gripper arm again. This is not gonna be the strongest. You're not gonna be able to pick up a ton, but now we need to do one more test. Who's in charge here? So one thing I've always wanted to try in my shop is some type of automated slider. I'm a one man band and so most of my shots are on a tripod like right now. But what if I could use this guy to get some moving shots? Now, obviously I'm not gonna be able to put a super heavy camera. So I have got out my GoPro and I could probably 3D print some type of mount that would go onto it. But uh, for this really bootleg test, we are just going to tape it around. Hopefully I'm not gonna mess anything up. So I should be able now to control it. and get some smooth shots. I'm gonna turn it on and you're actually gonna see the other side. So. Now the only problem is there's really no like type of twist and um, the movement is still pretty choppy, especially when you're gonna look at it on the camera, you're gonna be able to see those kind of micro movements. This isn't something this is built to do, but I thought it'd be a fun test just to see how it worked. Now, this shot definitely is not gonna be the smoothest, but it still is pretty fun to play around with something like this. All right, so while we're at it, I thought I might as well try one more test. So this is a little bit heavier of a camera. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. So now that I've had a chance to kind of check this thing out just a little bit, let's talk about the pros. First off, um, it's actually built really well for what you're getting. So I was really surprised just the amount of attachments that it has. The laser engraver, that's a little diode unit that is going right now. It has the uh, pneumatic system that is both like a little suction cup and then the claw, which is really cool. And then it also has a pin module where you can drop in a pin and it draws and it has a 3D printing setup. And I did not have a chance to check out the 3D printing stuff. I'm gonna do that in a future video. And then for the most part, it's super easy to use. So to change those modules, you just clip things in and you clip them out. Now on the con side of things, I kind of put this in the same category as something like a Snapmaker, which is a three-in-one 3D printer laser as well as CNC. So the same thing with this guy, this isn't gonna be the best diode laser engraver. For that, I'd actually pick the uh, Laser Master 2 from Ortur, it does a great job. And then just on the 3D printing side, it's not gonna be the best 3D printer just because of the way it's built. It's a robot arm, which looks a lot different than kind of your standard gantry and setup for a 3D printer. But it can just do things that other tools can't in my shop. I mean, the whole pick and place is pretty crazy. I don't really know what I'd use that for, but I guess if I was uh, like manufacturing things where I had to do a step over and over again, and they definitely advertise that. And then the drawing piece, I've actually done that with my daughter and she loves it. Uh, it's pretty crazy that she can see the marker go. And then going to the software, the software is actually super easy. You have all those different modules you can get into. It has an entire programming environment, but you can go in and kind of drag and drop blocks so it can do different things. So I think on the educational side of things, uh, this is a really, cool option for you guys. They have a couple modules that you can add on to it. So in addition to the 3D printing, there is also a conveyor belt. So it can like move along a conveyor belt or there can be a conveyor belt that moves materials across it and then it kind of picks in places. And then there's actually a camera unit that uses AI so it can actually recognize different colors, different objects, pick in place. And then you can hook up an Arduino and program all different types of things to it. So I think this is a really cool platform if you want a robot arm that you can play around with. Now, if you are are looking for a budget diode laser engraver, this one from Ortur is my favorite. And then in this video, we actually go into all the top laser engravers that are out there in my top recommendations. All right, I will see you in those videos. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.